Check out this new gun I have. Ooh, what does it do? It makes things disappear. So I have to be very careful. I'll show you by hitting this conveniently placed suspicious looking bag of white powder over there. Three, two, one. Okay, look, you might ask yourself now, why should we destroy the moon? Well, you cute piece of DNA. Because every single night it just mocks us with its glow like, Ooh, look at me, I'm perfect. And also, the moon drifts away from Earth about 4 centimeters or about 0 0.02 Grinches each year. So it seems to me that it doesn't even want to be here anymore. So how do we do it? How do we destroy the moon? You might think that the easiest thing to do would be to simply blow it up. But we actually can't, because its binding energy, or in simpler terms, the force that's holding it together, is so big that even a billion nukes wouldn't be enough to blow it to pieces. Even if we could somehow split it apart, it would just reform into a sphere again. But hold on, there is an even cooler way to do it, and we don't even need to build a weapon for it. Because we already have it. In fact, you are standing on it right now. What does he mean? I have no idea. We use the Earth itself. But if you think we're just going to crash the moon into the Earth, then listen up, because what I'm going to tell you is way cooler than that. Eh. Ever ask yourself why the moon stays up there in the first place? Well, Earth's gravity is constantly pulling on the moon that is far enough away from us and moves quick enough to overcome Earth's gravity. That also means that if we want to bring it closer to us, we just need to slow it down. Unfortunately, because the moon is such a chonker, we couldn't even do this by strapping a billion rockets to it. At least not quick enough for our purposes. But anyway, for this video we're just going to pretend we could slow it down by, let's say, this guy's mental power. So, we slowed it down and it now comes closer and closer to the Earth. Now the real fun begins. Because eventually it will cross this invisible line called the Roche Limit. Every planet has one, and once the moon crosses our Roche Limit, it enters Earth's nope zone, where gravity starts to do really mean things. And here's what happens. The Earth's gravity starts pulling way harder on the side of the moon that's closer to us than on the far side. These so-called tidal forces stretch and squeeze the moon until our chunky space body can't hold itself together anymore and get shredded into countless pieces. As you see, peace was never an option for our lovely planet. All that's left is a shiny, chaotic ring of moon rubble around Earth, which also means Earth is officially out of the dating game at this point. Okay, so now that our moon is finally gone, let's see what some of the immediate effects on us and our planet would be. With the moon being no more, you might expect the nights to be much darker now, with all nocturnal life having to adapt to these new conditions. But most likely, our nights would actually be way brighter, because what we essentially did by shattering our moon is stretching it over a much wider surface, which means all the little moon bits can reflect way more sunlight down at us during the night. <coughs> What these little moon pieces would also do all the time is fall down on us. While most of the pieces would just burn up in our atmosphere, some would certainly be big enough to reach the ground. I'm so happy we finally bought our dream home, honey. I should have married your brother. Another rather drastic change that we would feel immediately concerns our tides. No moon means that our tides are now controlled by the sun and would therefore only be about a third as strong. This would have a major impact on our climate and ecosystem. Many animals would therefore become extinct, not only on the land, but also in the water, because the ecosystems there rely either on the ebb and flow of the tide or on the ocean currents to constantly exchange warm and cold water and distribute nutrients and oxygen, which would also drastically change. But now we come to the much more serious effects, although these would take a while before we notice them. The moon plays a crucial role in stabilizing the Earth's axis, which in turn <laughs> is responsible for our reliable seasons. Without the moon, the Earth's axis would chill from anywhere between zero degrees to lying on on its side at 90 degrees, like your <coughs> Uranus. Man, that joke is old. Screw you, I'm hilarious. This would mean that one half of the Earth would experience six months of constant sunlight, followed by six months of complete darkness and cold. So you are saying that without the moon, winter is coming? <sighs> For the watch. The moon also slows down Earth's rotation. A few billion years ago, days were only a few hours long because Earth was rotating way faster. Without the moon, Earth would stop rotating slower, days would become shorter again and the climate would change drastically. We would have much stronger winds, for example. 
In order to survive properly, you need either very deep roots or very large and heavy feet and a small body. But anyway, hope you found this interesting. If you want to know if it really hurts to get shot, then watch this other video of mine. Thanks for watching, hit like if you like, hit that bell or go to hell, and bye.